There is no denying that. The rhododendrons and azaleas produce some of the most spectacular bloom displays of our native shrubs, which has made them extremely popular for use in home landscaping. As beautiful as these glossy leaf shrubs are, they equal that beauty in the amount of confusion surrounding them since they look similar and share a genus. Along with some other cool shrubs I will get to in a bit. They are also quite different from each other in some important respects. There is a saying about these two groups of shrubs. All azaleas are rhododendrons, but not all rhododendrons are azaleas, which may have you scratching your head, but I assure you it will make perfect sense by the time we get done. To start unraveling that saying, we need to take a look at a bit of taxonomy first. The shrubs we call rhododendrons and the shrubs we call azaleas both belong to the genus rhododendron, which is part of the heath family, the Ericaceae, a large plant family that many other native shrubs belong to, including the familiar and loved blueberries in the genus Vicinium. The genus rhododendron is large and varied, with around 1,000 species worldwide and a wide distribution in eastern North America, with a few species being native to the west. I wanted to get this taxonomy out of the way early because it is the reason for much of the confusion between azaleas and rhododendrons. They are both members of the genus rhododendron, so why call them different things? It comes down to morphology, how the plants look, that separates them into further subgroups. Let's start with the general growth form of the shrubs. In general, the native azaleas are smaller, more compact shrubs with an open form and fine branches. Rhododendrons on average will be larger with an open growth form and larger stout branches. These are generalizations however and the overall size and growth form can overlap quite a bit between the two groups, so other characteristics must be used to differentiate them accurately. There are some noticeable differences in the leaves between the azaleas and rhododendrons. Azaleas have smaller leaves that don't feel overly thick, while rhododendrons have larger, thicker, leathery feeling leaves. The lower surface of azalea leaves are smooth to slightly hairy, especially along the mid vein, and those of rhododendrons have a fuzzy, felt-like texture. The azaleas can be deciduous or evergreen, with our native azaleas being deciduous. Rhododendrons are for the most part evergreen. I'm gonna jump back to the evergreen azaleas for just a second. This is a quick way to tell our deciduous native azaleas from the many evergreen non-native azaleas that are available in the horticulture trade. Although just because an azalea is deciduous doesn't necessarily indicate that it is a native azalea as there are non-native deciduous azaleas and many hybrid azaleas. More on this in a little bit. By far the most precise way to differentiate the azaleas and the rhododendrons is by examining the flowers as this is the way these groups were split up taxonomically by botanist. The azaleas have tubular or funnel shaped flowers and rhododendrons have bell shaped flowers. Azalea flower heads may be scattered along the branch although they are usually near the end of the branch and are open or ring shaped. The rhododendrons have the flowers clustered tightly at the tips of the branches in dense flower heads known as trusses. Both azaleas and rhododendrons have flower buds that are grouped tightly together, and they can look like one giant flower bud as they open. Looking closely at the flowers will reveal that azaleas have five stamens, the male reproductive part of the flower, and the rhododendrons have ten stamens. Since the flowers of both groups are large and showy, these parts are quite easy to see and count. If you find learning how to identify native shrubs by their flower structure fascinating, then please go identify that like button. While we are talking about the flowers of these shrubs, I think it is a good time to bring up one of the most interesting things about azaleas and rhododendrons. Their flowers produce pollen and nectar that contains granotoxin, which is a type of neurotoxin. You may have heard of the mad honey that is produced by the giant Himalayan honeybee in Nepal, and those crazy open combs built on cliff faces, and in Turkey near the Black Sea by the local strains of the European honeybee. This honey is the result of bees foraging on the abundant rhododendron species in the area, which also happen to produce high levels of granotoxin. While mad honey is eaten as both a medicinal and recreational drug, it can have some serious effects on heart rate and blood pressure. It is a neurotoxin after all. Because of the effects it can have on humans when ingested, it was even used as a weapon by King Mithridates when his forces were facing those of Roman General Pompey in the Third Mithridatic War. Mad honey was left where the Romans would find it and think it a spoil of war. 
Once they had ingested it and become slightly incapacitated, King Mithridates had his men attack and scored a victory. Honey as a weapon, and all due to some toxin-producing flowers. On rare occasions when the weather is right, or wrong if you are a beekeeper trying to produce a honey crop, and there is a late freeze in the Appalachian Mountains, mad honey may be produced as the bees have little else to forage from other than the hardy azaleas and rhododendrons. If you love nerding out about native plants, how to grow them, how to choose them for the biggest impact for pollinators and wildlife, and cool facts about them, and you want to connect with people who feel the same way and get some guidance as you travel along your habitat journey, then I encourage you to check out the Backyard Ecology Community. This is the place that backyard ecologists come together to make their habitat dreams come true, share in wins, and work through problems together, all without the negativity of traditional social media. Not only that, but members of the Backyard Ecology Community have direct access to Shannon and myself and we do two live virtual meetups every month where members can ask questions such as, what do I plant? When do I plant? How do I put in a water feature? Does Anthony own any other clothes other than to be's or not to be shirts? I know some of you are wondering. Seriously though, if you love native plants and creating functioning ecosystems on your property, even if you're just starting out, especially if you're just starting out, then the backyard ecology community is the place for you It'll help you save time, money, and a whole bunch of heartache as you try to make your habitat dreams come true. I encourage you to check out the Backyard Ecology community. I will put a link for more information in the description. Now back to the confusing world of azaleas and rhododendrons. The characteristics covered in this video will work when trying to figure out if a shrub you are looking at out in the wild is a native azalea or a native rhododendron. Am I the only one that thinks that the rhododendrons need another common name? Maybe like Rose Bay, which is another name they sometimes go by? Just seems like that would be a whole lot less confusing. Anyway, if you are looking at a rhododendron species in a planted setting, things get a little more complicated. There are over 10,000 named and registered azalea cultivars alone. And that does not include rhododendron cultivars, or even the crosses between azaleas and rhododendrons called azaleodendrons. These cultivars can be crosses between our native azalea species, or they could be crosses between our native azaleas and non-native azaleas, or crosses between non-native azaleas. And it can get super confusing because all their morphological characteristics kind of get muddled up when we start doing this. About the only way to know exactly what you are looking at with a planted rhododendron species is if it is clearly and properly labeled. When buying azaleas or rhododendrons and you want straight species, just look for the scientific name on the label with no cultivar name in parentheses. This will be a straight species. If it has a species name with a cultivar name in quotes, then that is a cultivar of that species. If the label has rhododendron species x species or rhododendron x with a cultivar name in quotes that is a hybrid it can get confusing but this is the best way i know to tell you what to look for native wild type azaleas and rhododendrons are available in the nursery trade but you may have to do some looking in order to find them another thing to be aware of especially for those of you that live in the northern tier states and up into canada is there is yet another group of shrubs in the genus rhododendron native to that area, the Labrador teas. These are much smaller shrubs, usually under three feet in height, and in some areas they may only be several inches tall. They are best known for their small, fragrant leaves that are used, as their name suggests, to make tea. I told you, this is one confusing genus. Hopefully now you understand why all azaleas are rhododendrons, but not all rhododendrons are azaleas. I plan to make videos covering the native azaleas and rhododendrons that dive deep into the various species since they are such spectacular shrubs. But until I get those done, you can learn about some popular native berry producing shrubs that are in the same family as the rhododendrons, the super tasty blueberries. By checking out this video and be sure to take some time and enjoy nature in your backyard.